The dream of the refugees is to reach the traditional main immigration countries such as Canada, America, Australia. For the Ethiopians and the Eritreans on a classical steppe migration route, Sudan is the first stopping gate to exile. The French poet Victor Hugo gave a universal definition of exile, saying exile is a nudity of right. The word refugee means, when you see it uh, by the word, uh, um, in Amharic, when you see the word death, even this is as insult. Everyone, he starts against you, they took it, some just smile it, this is your country. I don't know another nationality, but especially, especially those who are through Sudan coming to Cairo, Eritreans and Ethiopians are very suffering. I moved to Sudan. I crossed uh, Eritrea, the border, and I entered to Sudan. Uh, by no, by foot. In my view, a refugee is a survivor. I met Hussein Aragweni Gidei and Amaha and hundreds of refugees when I was collaborating with a legal aid program set up by the American University in Cairo to defend the refugee files before the UNHCR. I come from my country in 1988. I stay in Sudan 10 years. And how, how long did you stay in Gaddafi? In Gaddafi for just uh, one week. And then you go you Yeah, to there is core, yeah, there is core refuge. Mm -hmm. And they give me, they call Tasrih, mm -hmm. the UN, just the branch. They give us after I move from uh, Gaddafi to Khartoum. In Khartoum, there is uh, Eritrean and uh, Ethiopian Tigray refuge. Some people is. I arrive and I get. Uh, I was stay with them, and I will start to work where? in Sudan. You were in Khartoum. Khartoum. Uh, I was in them. The majority of whom are Ethiopian and Eritrean. They are escaping chronic droughts and conflicts in the Horn of Africa. The coffee ceremony is a marker of civilization, a sign to tell the world that you belong to the Abyssinian Highland culture. To prepare coffee for a passing guest is a mark of love, 
For undesirable visitors, we offer tea. Tea can be made in a few minutes, therefore your guests understand that it should not stay too long. <laughs> when I went to the neighborhood where Araguene used to live in Khartoum, Dam, I understood why she would regret the wealthy social life of the refugees there. Collective cooking in the courtyard, long hours spent drinking coffee with beloved neighbors or friends. In Sudan, um, the life is, I can say, it's better than uh, Egypt. But there is, uh, because the border between Ethiopia and Sudan is uh, free, I always have some problem, a security problem. That's why I moved from Sudan to Ethiopia. From Sudan, sorry, to Cairo. He feels more at ease in a cosmopolitan city like Cairo. He learned English and how to use internet. So that's how he found his exiled family. Yes, I live here. This is uh, Aramadi. Uh, our area is Tre Tahrir. In Sudan, life for refugees is very difficult. Even uh, if you look at, if in kitchen something like this, in Sudan it's very hard to cook by charcoal like this, uh, and uh, uh, sleeping outside because of uh, pot, uh, and uh, there is no stop to cook a food in Sudan. It's, it's also a factor. It's different. That's better uh, Egypt than Sudan. I think uh, my future life. Uh, in America, I hope that it will be better, but God knows everything. I will see my second chance there. Here we are stuck. I can't do nothing. Our life is like this. We woke up early in the morning, we sat on the TV the whole day, the time became dark, and we sleep. We lost all, all the desire we have. Food desire, testing, dancing. One day when there was a party, you know, I couldn't dance, I never danced, you have seen me, because I don't have a, that desire, it's died. Hussein participates in these dances in Cairo so as to keep hold of the tradition of his country of origin. That ceremony is a ceremony for the people who want us to play or to dance I, as I think as they dance. Or well, some of them they have a belief on it. Um, they see it as American thing is to treat themselves.
was not. It was not, yeah, and this is not the czar, which is they are saying at all. Just this old drums. If you want to the czar, we can go to the direct to the, to the source of where is the czar exactly. You can see the fact of czar in the ceremony of the czar. This is all only drums. This is only sound of drums you want to see. America, Canada, Australia, not all of the refugees can reach this dream and they can be stuck in transit spaces for years, sometimes for their entire life. A trial of strength. His obstacle course exemplifies the itinerary of refugees following one of the longest rivers in the world, the Nile, through the Nubian desert. Now I'm okay and I'm better than before that I have suffered uh, when I was um, in my home country in prison in prison also to escape from prison to go uh, that uh, through Sudan from Sudan to Cairo uh, from Cairo deportation again to Aswan to the border from the border also uh, I decide again to come on foot again to Cairo He brought me <laughs> from the desert. <laughs> For good days, the pharaonic splendors do not correspond to a tourist's discovery, but consist in an exhausting walk taking him directly to prison. I work, I start to work at night, but you know, there is very difficult, it's very dark, dark. Uh, how can, where I go, I don't understand because uh, I don't have, uh, but I used to sometimes, I, I bought uh, battery uh, to protect myself from something from dark. Sometimes I tired and I sleep uh, under, under the mountain. Sometimes I used to go through the mountain Mm, beside the Nile, because if I if I if I lost from the Nile water, maybe for myself I will be die because no water there. I could not get water easily, so I, I will not be lose from the Nile water. <laughs> So this is the life uh, about uh, more than uh, 20, uh, about 28 days. So my leg, my foot, on my foot, it was very, it's very become big when I arrived in Cairo. You know, it was coming big, big, very big. It's affected. I changed the shoes when I arrived here. And some people they help me also to get medicine and to treat myself. And then I become good at that time. That's 
ده اللي كان ده؟ أنا قلت لها ستة جنيه بتقول أربعة قلت لها خمسة دي اسمها؟ أوكي عذر كبير ده كويس ده كويس ماشي عايزين ده؟ لا مش عاوز ده ده How many times you changed house? Ten times In how many years? Three years Poetic and resourceful, Hussain is originally from Djibouti. He had to live a very comfortable life in his country and arrived in Cairo in poor health in 2000. Recognized as a refugee by the UNHCR six months after he arrived, being a linguistic genius, speaking eight rare languages, pushed him to get back on his feet. I'm okay. You told me you even slept in a bus. Yeah, this is 400. 400 bus. Number, number 400, this goes to the, uh, to the airport. This bus goes to the airport. It stays one hour on the way. Two hours I sleep there. It's quarter of the pound they take. It take 25 piaster. That's why I go on for it. It takes one hour. I sleep. No police. No person speak with you. Going in the camp, two hours I sleep. If I pay two pound, I can go four and four times. Four hours I sleep on it. This is a method of using because there is no tea room. And if you sit in tea room, the police disturbs you uh, a lot. But here is a voyage. You are on the voyage. You sleep. This is number four hundred. I will not forget this is number four hundred. A tireless walker, Hussein dreams of being resettled in Australia. Before uh, I come here, I am. I come on, Julie. Come on, Mike. Yes, it's it's difficult because why? I was a refugee in Sudan. When I come here, I come with traveling document. Uh, some foreigners they help me just for the plane something the money and Michael when he comes uh, seven years I enter him Egyptian school here no it is Egyptian school no, stopping no, seven huh? how many years Before he was when I was six you were six okay six something so like that's his age I drove him to the school to go and anyway, in the school he gets some problems an accident with pencil when he was writing her friend she pushed him one lady in the, in the class. It was uh, around 10 o'clock something. But when uh, he got this accident, when we take him to the doctor to hospital, it was very bad. It was inter eight cents. And he lost his eyes. Even when he entered to make operation, no one he knows except the doctor. Because we are not legal. We are not legal. No one will accept who are you. No passport, no nationality. No protection. No protection, well. yeah. Anyway, in the last, God is great. God, he helped him in the body. After his accident, Michael lost 95% of the vision of his left eye. God, he saved him, Michael. Okay? To go to make operation, I and Mukhal Asabi, just Mukhal Asabi uh, for mind. It's not easy. It's life. Okay? No one he signed. Doctor, he enter. Just uh, what I will say to you. As uh, he opens orange, something like that. Who is a doctor? Why? We don't know it. But we say, with a God, he enter Michael, he make this operation. If I was half protection. In legal, he will enter. In legal, I can ask my right. He's a student. It happens these things inside the school. The school, it will be take the responsibility for the son or the family as a law. I don't know. 
But because of I'm not legal, I'm stateless, I have not any nationality, I do not get my rights. You cannot so you cure your son. Yes, because no, of me, you see, because of me, if I was have protection, I will get also through me my son. He's young, he don't know nothing. I am, I am the mother and I'm the father, I'm taking care for him. Because I'm refuge, my son, he comes also refuge. For these uh, problems, he get it also. If somebody has a strong moral commitment, that it seems to me that that's that's extremely important. <laughs> For, uh, for a person home is where he born and where he grows, means his life, his life in, the, in his home means his everything. For us home means a life, in a life when you get uh, all your full right and everything, that time you can feel the test of the life on it, but if you leave your home you, 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 you lose this test and uh, it, the life comes testless. For this, is for, uh, for this thing we consider home is alive, like a breeze coming every time from us, and we can go on it. And, uh, and uh, home is not something cannot be substituted, and we cannot get our home at all unless we go at the same place we are born and grow. And to get at home again is very difficult. I, I can say home like a mother. He man have one mother and they lose one mother. Never I can have two, three mothers. For this reason, uh, home is very important for us. <laughs> Yeah, wait. And after the accidents, I visit a lot of churches. More than uh, 26. I do not uh, think about my family. Just I think I was saying about me and about my son because without family, without father, without parent, it's sometimes also he asking me, "What is my family? What is why, mommy? We are not going to home. He know, he knows we have not passport. We are not." He knows that you are on the run. Yeah. And you are on the run from the age of 16. And now, how old are you? 30. The key is you and she are. There is a difficulty, but it is over beyond their the ability. It's beyond the ability. They was giving them money, they don't have money. They don't want to get help from others in the international organizations to help us. They cannot help us. An office cannot help you. But, but they have a willing of helping. They have acceptance. But when they give you a resettlement, it's not something on their hand. Maybe the resettlement can be for Canada and Australia or any America. This, they pass your file to them. They do what they best. But the right remains with these people who have the land. For example, the Canadians, they can accept you, they can refuse you. But they can, they can send your file to America, the Americans can accept you, can refuse you. To send you to Australia, they can accept you, can refuse you. But they did their best. <laughs> In Kasala, 
in northeastern Sudan, lost in the desert, a refugee camp of Benihammer Eritreans. <coughs> The peace process between Eritrea and Ethiopia started two years ago. Consequently, the refugees ceased to be under the protection of the Geneva Convention. To push them out of Sudan, the humanitarian agency dismantled the water pump, stopped distributing food rations and closed the hospital. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Can you ask her? Asma'i, I told you that you are going to die I ask her how you are living now after all services stopped, water, medicine, ration. She said we walk on food to the Gash River and we bring the water. And for the food? We take it she said, she said my husband is used to go to the forest or to the garden located here near the camp and when he brings something we buy from the market Dura. Dura? Yes. How many children she has? And the Kamala. Kamala and the Four children. <laughs> they are Beni Amr from Eritrea. You are from Eritrea? Yes. You are Karen? Yes. You are from And why he decided to stay here and not to repatriate it? Why did he not go to Eritrea? So what did she say? Why didn't she repatriate repatriated to Eritrea? She don't explain clear. She's scared to go back to Eritrea. She don't want to go back, but she don't want to show the reason. She doesn't want to say. Yes. Lima, I am she Eritrea. Makwes. Makwes. Le. We are Salam. <laughs> 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 She says that, that uh, she afraid that the wars continue again.
I think you've uh, you visited places like Opera Nus and Six October here in Egypt, and you see the desperate conditions that refugees are living under, and you've been to Sudan as well. And I don't think that any of those people would have chosen life in Egypt over the life uh, in Sudan unless they really had to go. So in my view, uh, there are not very many people who abuse this asylum system. They, they come because they need to find safety. My friend says uh, food is the best medicine for refugees. Mm, very Why? funny. Mm, he believes that. <laughs> These are two chickens which I'm considering them like a little, uh, they are a little refugee because they don't have a mother, they don't have a mother, they, would, they didn't get a good handling, maybe they will leave. Maybe they will die, and they color them, and they make on them on what they want. They can sell them. When I see this bear, this uh, chickens, I feel sorrow for them. Food is a consolation for Hussein. During Ramadan months, he regularly sat at Ahman tables. Eating for free is part of daily success in his survival strategy. Rahman tables are popular restaurants set up by the rich portion of society for the poor. During Ramadan, these tables are related to Sadaqa, a voluntary charity. It means this what you see. This eating for Allah, for Ar Rahman. Allah and Ar Rahman is the same meaning. <laughs> Every year I eat with the Egyptian families, every Ramadan, I'm very happy and uh, it's a good breakfast. Uh, every year since I stay here in Egypt, always I eat with them. It's my favorite also. That's, uh, it's a good culture. We get uh, every day uh, meat or uh, chicken 
by uh, 700 uh, pound and the other thing is, is about 300 pound in Maidat Rahman in uh, here uh, we have 120 sitting it is not hospitality for Muslim only it is hospitality for anybody anybody any human any human. Any human. If he if he from India, mm -hmm. he's got his uh, cow. Okay, doesn't matter. He can sit on your table. Ah. And I eat, I eat with them. That's not that's not make difference for me. It's not make difference. Any difference? Anybody? Christian or not Christian? Jews? Uh, anybody? Is a deal, my God, my God. Is only. And this also, my dear Rahman, is the same thing. Is a deal with my God. It's, no, deal, it's yeah. not a deal with anybody. It's a deal with my God. Mm. That's one one reason why I like anthropology. Is it's it's has discovered some universals, and the universal about, universal uh, about the gift that you you that we define our status relationships with the gift. I think is a universal in every society. <laughs> Okay. In Cairo, not I. I not exactly swimming. I, st I start out to fly because I was having, I was having a wing, but my wings was broken. I rebuilt my big wings again and I can fly now where I were, where I want. <laughs> Friendship is not bad. I like to make friends even with the people to get sharing ideas, sharing knowledge. It's good for me. I get a way to get a chance to get or something. I have to share that for others. Resiliency is a skill to progress and to get back on your feet in spite of life's confrontations, which could have turned out to be fatal. I'm here four years in Cairo, in Refuge. Before they was not accepting me in, now they accept me. I'm very happy. Gadeh is a painter. He arrived in Cairo in 1993. During many years, he painted black and brown faces distorted by suffering in the Egyptian capital. Recognized by the UNHCR in 2001, he is now legal. He has a right to exist. This legal recognition transformed his paintings. His horizons are now open to other colors. In 
incredible suffering that people overcome uh, and, and the fact that they're able to go on and I think they're moral heroes. Forget the problems is the best revenge. As far as I survive in Sudan, in Egypt, I hope so, I will be surviving, surviving in America. In America. Yeah. Amaha stayed in Cairo for 10 years before going to the States. He's in Seattle today. He sends me mails on a regular basis saying that he can't re believe it. He now owns a washing machine, a dryer, a microwave. After four years of legal nudity, four years of fearing imminent arrest, Araguene was recognized by the UNHCR in June 2003. Come here, Michael. What's your killer? Araguene can now discover the sumptuousness of the pyramids as a tourist. I can I can say I can admire myself because uh, I can say uh, I'm strong through the God. Not I'm not uh, I'm not strong, but just there is God. Maybe he, uh, he lead me to be he he give me to be strong. This is because this is I passed through this kind of problems. That's why I become I feel I I can't proud myself because I came on foot and uh, to get this uh, chance from that uh, difficult times. This is, I can proud myself also, I can proud myself. People who have withstood so much, uh, so many problems for a cause, for a reason, and they, they should be proud of themselves and people should respect them for, for, the, for, this, for this experience. <laughs>
a du restant de peinture rose sur son, sur son corps. C'est Hussein qui a voulu le sauver. Et c'est Zineb qui l'a pris chez elle. Finalement, elle a. Ça n'est pas.